Our thought today is uh, a very simple thought because I'm a very simple person. And I don't mean that in a false modesty or anything like that. It's just the truth. I just have simple, plain thoughts. And I read in the 27th division of Psalms, the psalmist said, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path, in a way that people can understand and know what's on my heart. And that's what we desire today. Our lesson will be found in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, which we refer to as the love chapter in the Bible, referring to charity many times, but we want to move down, Lord being our helper, to the 8th verse. <clears throat> Charity never faileth. God's love never fails. You and I can come short, can't we? But God's love never fails. And I thought about how that this has been a great week. I want to thank the, the church for uh, allowing... Uh, this minister school again this year for I have no idea and probably you don't either of the behind the scenes work that goes on for us to be able to sit here together in heavenly places to sit with our brethren where else can we uh, uh, find this type of setting and, and place where we can come and fellowship with each other and grow and love each other and I want to thank uh, I thought maybe if they ever, as far as I know, there's not been a history book. Maybe there has, but uh, of the uh, uh, Old Union Minister School. But uh, if they did, if they ever wrote one, there might be an 11th uh, chapter of it uh, that'd be like the faith chapter and show some, uh, uh, their, their uh, history book would include a lot of the old preachers uh, that were... Uh, uh, instrumental in organizing and starting this and the church members. And uh, there's a lot of people uh, listed in that chapter. People, uh, women that, that take part. And oh, I, I just want to thank the Lord. I, Brother Brad's done a wonderful job. But I think about the ones before him, the preachers that have already gone on. And I, wanna, I do want to say thank you and for all of their labor. But the week that I really want to look at also is the week that is, is right in front of us. The Bible tells us about a time when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and he bled and died. And on the third day he arose again. And because of uh, his uh, uh, sacrificial uh, uh, act there on the, uh, the cross of Calvary, giving his life willingly, you and I, when he uh, uh, was resurrected from the grave and uh, we see all these things put into place, you and I can uh, have an opportunity to hear the gospel and be saved. Why, so many of us today have... As we gather here, uh, we have uh, a great uh, testimony of salvation, and we need to be telling. I, even uh, as we preach from time to time, I don't ever want to get too far away uh, from uh, telling people, no matter how long it's been, the time and place where that the Lord spoke peace to my soul. Amen. Now, let us get back to our reading lesson in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Charity never faileth, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. 
For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. I'm going to say one day after a while, uh, when the Lord comes back on a cloud of glory, uh, 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 with the souls of those that's been saved and the angels, uh, one day after a while, uh, there's going to be a great uh, uh, knowledge imparted that you and I don't have access to right now. I don't know how many people, Brother uh, Hicks said maybe 120 or so, uh, but I, I'm going to say that I would be at the very bottom of the list as far as knowledge and uh, uh, things of that uh, 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 matter. But I, uh, as long as people have been saved, men saved and called to carry the gospel, there is a place that God has prepared for you. Uh, there may be a, a, a someone that has a different uh, method, uh, has a different way to get the gospel out, but I'm going to say, uh, you yeah, preacher friends, we've got to preach the way God calls us to preach. Amen. I can't preach like these other men have preached. I don't know how to do that. I was not raised in this way. I didn't hear uh, the old preachers as uh, Brother Carter said was, a not, was not rocked in a Baptist cradle. But nevertheless, the Lord had mercy on me and saved me. And I'm thankful today. I remember when the Lord called me to preach. Uh, I, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I thought, Lord, I can do anything but that. You know, I ran for about two years. And I remember when the Lord saved my soul, people preaching about the Lord's church. I hadn't been saved but just a few days. And, and, and uh, as, as is common many times at the end of revival, and, and you can feel it seems like it's coming to a close, the preacher would have a message to the church about uh, uniting with the church, the duties of the church, and such as that. And I remember telling the preacher, after I'd just been saved for just a little bit, I said, preacher, I really enjoyed it, but I didn't understand it. I was that honest because I didn't understand it. He was preaching about the bride of Christ. He was preaching about uh, what you and I hold dear today. Uh, the preacher said, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And as we look at this today, uh, we're looking at it in part. And it said, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, Charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. Now, our thought today would be our text, if we could uh, use a text today, would be found in the 12th verse. In verse 12 of our scripture lesson, the apostle Paul tells us that now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. We're looking as we, uh, as preachers, uh, we're looking at, at a, a time that we are uh, looking through a glass darkly. 
and that we don't understand uh, exactly everything. Uh, uh, there, there, as someone said uh, yesterday, there's parts of this uh, scripture that I just have to ask the Lord to send somebody to me uh, that you can use to uh, uh, let me understand it or help me through uh, the prayers uh, uh, that I may offer up to you. Show me what this means. Because I don't know uh, the, the uh, entirety of it. This now and then, the Bible uses this in comparing and uh, contrasting. When you're reading and uh, you look at scriptures and places and people and events in the Bible, now and then comes to play quite often, comes in, into the uh, uh, scriptures. As we look at then... Uh, we consider now, we're thinking of today. Now, now and then. Today, presently, this hour, the hour in which we live. And as we look at then, we're referring to a time to come, days ahead or in the future. I'd like to look for just a few moments at a couple of subjects, two or three subjects today. It has to do with the preachers of God's Word as we gather here. Now, in this day in which we live, there's going to be times when you're going to struggle, when we're all going to struggle. Uh, there'll be times whether you are uh, 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 an evangelist, uh, whether you're a missionary, where uh, you're pastoring or you're preaching in uh, uh, assisted livings and nursing homes, whatever it is, there'll be times in this uh, uh, day in which we live that you'll struggle. It could be with your thoughts and fears it could be that your memory uh, is not uh, uh, what it used to be. It could be a lot of things that could hinder you. But I'm going to say Satan uh, will try to uh, 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 hinder. He will try to uh, uh, throw a monkey wrench into uh, your ministry. And I want to say that for the most part, Danny can go back to places where I've been hindered. And a lot of times, it's just a plain uh, uh, a word that, hey, it's sin. I, I, there's something that's blocking me. There's something that's in the way. And as we look at the time of now, I want to say that it's not God's will that this, this happened. Satan is always trying to hinder God called men from sowing the gospel seed. Amen. But the Lord will always be there to help us when we look to him for our help. Amen. Brother Moran's lesson yesterday, he made a statement. He said, God will not abandon you. Amen. When you feel like that uh, you've gone just about as uh, low as you can go. Remember, uh, 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 God saved you. God called you to preach. God knew where you'd be, and he's there. He'll help you. Amen. Amen. And I think about a lot of uh, the lessons I've heard. And it... My, I, there's a title now and then on this. There's other titles. But when I sit in your seat, the Spirit of God will direct me oftentimes in a way that's far off the title. And I'm going to, I, I want to uh, 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 thank the Lord for that. So I don't remember yesterday uh, or uh, one uh, service, uh, somebody said this, let your guard down. I thought to myself, by the help of the Lord, that's what I need to do today. Amen. 
let your guard down, be who God wants you to be, preach what God puts on your heart, Tell people uh, what uh, uh, the Lord has called you to, to uh, uh, carry uh, and preach. Now, the Lord told Jonah, he said, you go to Nineveh and you cry against the great city. And uh, the Bible said Jonah rose up and got on a ship to Tarshish. And being cast over board of the ship, he was swallowed by a great fish. And Jonah began to pray unto the Lord. And the Lord gave mercy to Jonah, and his cries were heard. And the Bible says he vomited him out on dry land. There came a time when that Jonah the Lord said you, uh, you go ahead and you go back. He had mercy and called said, yet he gave him the message. He said you preach the preaching that I bid you. Amen. And I don't know exactly all that he preached but he said yet in 40 days shall Nineveh be overthrown. The people believed the king came down in uh, sackcloth and ashes and repented. I'm going to uh, 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 trust today that whatever's needed here uh, in, in the uh, rest of this service, that God will help us and will direct us and lead us. Now as the time in which God called preachers look to the Lord. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2 tells us to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. As we look in Chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. I want to turn over there just a moment. This day in which we live now. He told the young preacher. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season and out. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine. But well, after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch uh, thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. He was telling us, he was telling the preachers then uh, there's going to be afflictions. There are going to be difficulties now. But he also said, uh, there's coming a then. Now is the time we're living in. Now is the day and hour that, that we see. But he said, there's coming a then. A time to come. A time to come. Paul knew that he was... Uh, he knew, first of all, he had to go to Rome, didn't he? He was not afraid of some of the things that were happening to him because the Lord had already showed him uh, that he had to go to Nero with the go uh, uh, gospel, had to go to Rome. And I believe that he knew also that his time was short because he started looking not so much as now, but then. And I'm going to say sometimes you and I as, as preachers, we need to look at the now, but sometimes we've got to look at then because one day after a while, you'll be able to put your Bible down. Uh, you'll be able to rest, but it's just not this moment. Amen. Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered 
and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I fought a good fight. I, I finished my course and I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me and not to me only, uh, but all those To all them that love is appearing. As we think about this today. Paul knew that he was about to lay down his life. And I want to say that to finish strong, there's been a lot of preachers that have started out strong. Continued strong for a while. But I believe that we need to finish strong because not only uh, are the things uh, before us, but we're uh, laying an example. To I, I look to these young faces out here, and I thank God for you, uh, that God will continue to use and bless you. Uh, we've got a, a great-grandchild that's on the way and there may be one of you that'll be preaching the gospel uh, to my family. And I want to say that we need to preach the word and be instant in season and out. We are, as 2 Corinthians 4 teaches us that we are to preach Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Amen. said, however, we have this treasure of salvation in earthen vessels. We have treasures in jars of clay. Amen. We are uh, uh, in a place where that uh, we have a desire uh, the 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 uh, uh, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak oftentimes. How that we need to ask the Lord to give us strength in these times. Second Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Paul suffered for the cause of Christ. We want to turn over there just a moment if we can. Look at this, 7 through 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The apostle said, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. As we uh, try to preach from time to time, uh, the Lord is uh, uh, looking for men uh, that in their spiritual being are, are weak and asking God to help. Lord, I don't know what to preach. I don't know how to preach. I need your help. Amen. And as we stand before the Lord, he said, my grace is sufficient Amen. for thee. For my strength is made perfect and weakness, your weakness, not your physical weakness, maybe not the boldness, but you depending on God and Him alone, realizing that I can't do anything, you can't do anything, but God is able to do all things. Uh, the Bible said, and we can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Preacher said there, Paul, I, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, 
in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. There's a verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that I think you all realize when the verse kind of gets in front of you and you don't, it just won't leave. It's there. You may preach on it, you study about it, you pray about it, and it's still there. In the 16th verse of this fourth chapter, I want to preach just a little bit about the then, a time to come. Preaching, brethren, a time to come. We need to look at that some as, as you go and, and you travel and, and you uh, uh, preach uh, in this place and you see uh, as pastors, you see the problems that are in your church family. You see the problems that's within our churches and things of that nature and they begin to weigh on you just a little bit. No, I better say that a different way, hadn't I? They weigh on you a lot. They go to bed with you. They keep you from sleeping at night. They can make you cross with your family sometimes. These troubles, these afflictions. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. But the verse we want to read to you is verse 17 that's on our heart. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. Our light affliction. No matter what you're going through, we've all suffered loss. We've all been troubled. We've all been down that road. But the Bible said it's our light affliction. Most of us are not going to be like Paul and have our head uh, uh, severed from our shoulders. Uh, we're not going to be like uh, those in the dark ages, uh, the uh, 50 million or so that uh, stood for the truth and would not uh, uh, bow uh, to the uh, uh, papal authorities and others around. We're not going to be like John Bunyan and uh, most of us here and spend most of our time in jail like Paul and Silas and others. It's our light affliction. Our light affliction. When you compare what we have waiting for us and we, uh, you look at what God has in store for us one day after a while. Our life is as a vapor. It appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that's now, but it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's then. That's the time to come. Preachers, now and then. I want to look just a moment, if we can, at the church now and then. Now, Ephesians 5.32, in the day in which we live, this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church, the Apostle Paul said. There's a lot of things in the scriptures that are mystery. And we see in part. And we know in part. One day after a while, we'll know as we are known. I'm going to say that goes a lot further than recognizing your uh, grandfather in heaven. We'll know as who knows us, who knows all about us and everything, our thoughts and intents, our motives. 
we'll know as we're known. I don't think we'll have uh, the total mind of God. I don't mean that. But we'll know. We'll know a lot more. My wife had cataract surgery not too long ago, and she said, uh, uh, it looks like everything's in LED. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a, a dark, we look through a, a glass darkly. We don't see the whole picture, but we can see the picture God puts us in. Amen. We can preach what God gives us. We know in part. And the church. I didn't understand about the preaching of the bride when I was first saved. But I knew I liked to hear it. I didn't know that. I liked to hear it. And little by little, the Lord's let me in on some of it. I'm not going to tell you I know all about the things. The Bible said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But as the Spirit hath revealed it unto us, uh, God has shown us. I've never been to uh, heaven. I, I, I've got a, my name's been written in the Lamb's book of life. I've got a home over there, but I've never been there. But I know I'm going. I know there may be differences on the dates, but I know Christ went to Calvary. I know that he was crucified and I, there may be I know on the third day the Bible said he arose from the grave uh, after he had uh, uh, been uh, laying in that borrowed tomb because the spirit when I was saved by the grace of God revealed unto me the truths of God's word people would tell me back in the day and time when I was lost They'd tell me things I'd never heard before. They'd say, you'll know when you're saved. Where I went, I don't remember being saved even as a, a word used. I don't remember that, that uh, uh, topic. It was just do the best you can. Obey the scriptures. Live a good life. Worship at the altar of good works. Things that you could do for yourself. But then I heard an old preacher one time. He said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He said, for I bear them record. Uh, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And they going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. I heard that. The preacher, the church was praying for me. My wife had gotten saved. About three weeks before that, she called and said, Danny's lost. Picked up the phone. The invention God gave us and called around and said, pray for him. The Lord saved my soul. The church. That's our we have a great responsibility. Preacher, I think, mentioned this earlier. 28th chapter of Matthew. Go ye therefore into all, into, into all the world, uh, teaching. And, uh, 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 let me... Let me just start with 18th verse. And Jesus came and spake and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's what that church was doing. They were preaching to the lost. They were telling me uh, uh, what I needed to do to be saved. Ephesians 3.21 says unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. The Bible tells us in the second chapter 
of Ephesians, how that we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I'm thankful for the true church that the, the church, the genuine church, and, and I believe a portion of it is settled here and, and the old time uh, missionary Baptist church. I know there may be some old uh, other names that still preach the same doctrine, but uh, I'm thankful that I heard an old fashioned missionary Baptist preacher preaching from an old fashioned missionary Baptist church and it convicted me. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That struck me like nothing ever had. The church now, that's our, that's our uh, uh, duty. That's our uh, commission to preach the gospel, the whole counsel of God. The Lord told the little infant church, he said, fear not little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the keys of the kingdom. And I want to say that there are a lot of places that the church today, she's underappreciated, she's ignored, she's abandoned. But to those of us that love the Lord's church, we need to uh, support it. We need to uh, uh, do everything that we can to uh, uh, make it a place where that it's thriving and where uh, the Spirit of God comes in and lost people. I'm uh, thankful for the one, ones that were seeking the Lord last night. We need to hold on to this old time way. The Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, stand ye in the ways and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But one day, after a while, I want to say this, maybe before I go right there, that there were patriarchs and especially prophets in the old days that they might not have been able to. They were looking through a glass darkly. God had given them uh, uh, prophecies. And as we look at this, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 62 and 2. I thought how that they may know in part, may not have the whole picture of it, see in part. But God gave them a, a, a part to uh, leave for us. And uh, uh, Isaiah 62 and 2 says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and the king, all kings, thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. And it went on down a little bit further, and it talked about thy land, uh, Beulah. Uh, the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Beulah uh, meaning bride or married, a picture of the Lord's church uh, that was uh, coming one day after a while. And we see where that... Psalm 72 and 16 has already been mentioned today. There'll be a handful of corn upon the top of the mountain. Uh, let's look that, at that just a minute. You know, the Lord told Moses, he said, you follow the pattern that I've shown you up in the mountain. 
He said there'd be a handful of corn on the top of the mountain. There should be a handful of uh, corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. They of that city shall flourish like the grass of the earth. Isaiah said in, it, in two and two, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and that shall be exalted above hill of the hills and all nations shall flow into it. These prophets, they had a vision of things. They might not have seen everything that we're privileged to see looking back, but they saw part. Amen. You and I may not be able to get the whole picture yet, uh, but one day after a while we will. In the, one day in the future, the Bible tells us that this church, this bride of Christ, this spouse bride, that she'll take her place alongside her bridegroom. Revelation 19, and we want to look there for just a moment. Verses 7 through 9. Let us be glad. Speaking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Everybody that's been saved, they'll be in heaven one day. I truly, genuinely been washed in the blood. Born again, they'll be in heaven. But there'll only be one bride. There'll only be one groom. But this is talking about the marriage supper. Let us therefore, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. I'm thankful today for everyone that's ever been saved, but for those that have united with the Lord's church, been saved, put their light on the candlestick, submitted themselves to scriptural baptism and walked and labored in the way God would have them to go. Also in Revelation 21. And I, John, saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem. Well, let me get the first verse. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This new Jerusalem, the city, I don't know exactly uh, uh, how that's going to be, uh, I, but one day after a while, there's going to be a special pra uh, place for the church of the true and living God, the ground and the pillar of the truth that brought the gospel directly or indirectly to you and your family and everybody. We walk here since this church was organized. There, there has been so many people that have sacrificed and given their lives for this cause. One of the <coughs> preachers from many years ago, he said, I don't know exactly how it'll be either, but he said, I see it as being kind of like it is here. You can live out in the country and you can go in and out the city when you want to. But if you really want all the amenities of the city, you'll have to have your residence there. Amen. A place where the church will dwell in the, the new Jerusalem, uh, the bride of Christ, a special place that God has prepared for her. While she's ignored now largely, one day after a while, 
the kings will bring their honor and glory into her. The nations that are saved. Aren't you glad? We close our message today. Without Christ, there's no now and then for the preachers. There's no now and then for the church. Jesus, you can read in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, 750 or so years before he was ever born of the sufferings that he would do. How he went to Calvary, how he was uh, uh, scourged and how he was, we've heard a a lot of that preached about. uh, And uh, that was the time when he was here on earth. But I'm going to say there's coming a then, a time in the future that he's coming back. The Bible said he's coming back in flame and fire to those that are lost, taking vengeance on them that know not God nor obey the gospel of the Son of God. But to those of us that's been saved, uh, they told uh, uh, when he went away on the cloud, he said he's coming back in like manner. We're going to be happy. He's going to be Lord of Lords. He's going to be King of Kings. One day after a while, he suffered for us while he walked here on the face of the earth, gave his life. But then we're going to worship him forever. There'll be no time. There'll be no sun. Our little one, we look through a glass darkly. We can't see it all. But one day after a while, we're going to be with the Lord. This is our message to you today. May God bless you as our prayer.